we got a couple of people watching here. So we're in downtown Halifax. There's Isaac. It's very dark. We've got a C8 telescope here, uh, Celestron. That's a counterweight, so it can stay in one spot. <laughs> That's right. We got a counterweight. And um, this is a Celestron AVX mount that we're running here. Yeah, we got a con hand controller. So right now we are focused on the moon here. So there's the moon, right above it is Jupiter and you can't quite see it to the right there is Saturn. So hopefully now that I picked up my phone, I can put it back on the telescope and it won't yell at me for having my rotation lock in the wrong orientation. Okay, looks like I may have lost the moon here. And Lisa's back on. How's it going? We've lost the moon. Famous line from Apollo 13. Um, we have lost the moon. That's not good at all. I don't know if it's the uh, iPhone adapter or if it is the um, the iPhone adapter or, or the pointing is just off. Here, Isaac, you just became a cameraman. Here, come here. Okay, let's see if we can get this focus again. Okay, here. Yeah. You hold that and talk to the good people on YouTube and you can film what I'm doing here. So I can, I can sort of walk you through it. So the battery is out on, so if you stand over here. Doot, 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 doot. Okay, so I lost the battery on my red dot finder. So I'm using a super old fashioned finder scope to make sure that we are all lined up on the moon. And that's, that's good to go. And then you find the moon in the eyepiece, which I have pointing at the Altai scarp right now, which is which is really great. We'll bring it back to the Lunar X here. Is this what this show is all about? Okay, let's see. All right. So let's put the phone back into the holder since we know that it is uh, lined up. Okay, now we're gonna go back and forth and up and down. There we, there we go. Okay, we're back. We are back. So you go up, down, left and right. And now we need to adjust the position toward the telescope. Oh, that's cool. So in this view, as you can see, we've got some earth shine and we've also got a background star there, which is pretty cool. All right, let's adjust focus now. Focus, John. Okay. Focusing. There we go. There's a lot of disturbance in the atmosphere right now. So it's kind of hard to Because that's the really sound going that. past. <laughs> that's the sound going past. Well, yeah, that's so it's uh, just movement in the air. So another thing we can do here is, this is a, a zoom eyepiece, and that's probably, wasn't the best option. But if we twist the phone like that, like that, it'll zoom in, and then we can use the hand controller to recenter us here, like that. There we go. And now whenever you change the magnification, you need to Adjust the focus again. Whoop. <laughs> and my diagonal fell over. Okay. Let's lock that down here. Okay. All right. And focus. There we go. Sometimes I think the iPhone focus fights the telescope, telescope focus. All right. Let's see if we can center back here on the Lunar X or the Werner X. Let me tap my screen and see if the iPhone kicks focus kicks in. It does not. Okay. Telescope focus. There we go. Yeah, next time I'll definitely use a normal plossal eyepiece as opposed to one of these uh, zoom eyepieces. Too much going on. But anyway, maybe we'll do a little tour of the moon, see how much I can remember here. So there's the X. Again, the X only shows up for a few hours a month. Yeah. Okay. 
And it's near the Werner Crater, so some people call it the Werner X. And, all right, there's the Altai, or the Alpine Valley there. It's one of my favorite, uh, favorite gashes in the moon, I guess. Right in the center. Try focus again here. All right. I think those are the, the bicycle craters right beside it. I just nicknamed them the bicycle craters. If the, the image looks a bit funny, well, focus aside, because we are uh, using, this is a mere reversed view right now. So if you're looking at a map, it's backwards. And that's just because we're using an SCT telescope with a diagonal. Come on, focus. I mean, I, I really, I think the, the root cause of our issue here is that the scope is pointed right over a building and the building has been in the hot sun all day and it's putting off a lot of heat. So it's really hard to gauge what the focus is. So, yeah. So, I forget what the names are, Exodonis, one of them, something like that. And then Atlas and Hercules are over there on the left. And what do we got down here? Sea of Tranquility. And there's the lunar L. Let me center that. I, I like to form an L with those craters that are in the, in the center there. Um, in the sea. And then you can use the bottom of the L to find the Apollo 11 landing site. And of course you can't see it. It's about a one thousandth of a pixel um, would be the diameter of the lunar lander. Let's see. Can I see any comments here? All right. There we go. Okay. Um, all right. Cool. Lots of good stuff on the moon. Some of my other favorite, more obscure things. That's the Marsh of Sleep, that discoloration in the center there by that nice ray crater. Usually always observe with some sort of map or, or my book, 50 Things to See on the Moon. And that's how you can sort of get a sense for what's what. You can see the Messier crater right in the center. They're small and they form this double ray. It's kind of hard to see in this image. Can I zoom in? Ooh, I can. Really blurry though. Yeah. So that's Messier there in the middle, but it sure is messy. There's the worst pun. Worst pun ever. Okay. We'll back up to here. Oh, look at the dumbbell craters. I love the dumbbell craters down at the, you know, let's center those. There we go. Dumbbell craters there. It's already 10 minutes in. It, we're 10 minutes in, yep. Okay. Should we do 30 minutes? We could do 30 minutes. <laughs> we'll probably run out of data. Because we are not at home, not on, not on Wi-Fi. Oh, there's a Lunar V. Check it out. Right there, Lunar V. And where's the Lunar L? It's been so long. Don't remember. I keep having to change the focus. Very strange. All right, what else is going on in space? Here, let's see if it'll remembers where Saturn was. I didn't, I'm never too diligent with the alignment when I'm doing visual observations. Um, for whatever reason. And so I usually get in trouble for that later. Okay. Because I told it, I told it, hey, this is Saturn. Replace my calibration stars with this one, which is Saturn. And then when I go back to Saturn, it's not there. So, such is life. 
Uh, let's give it a shot. Although, I don't even know if we'd be able to see Saturn with the iPhone settings having just gone from the moon. Yeah. Oh. No, that can't be it. Is that it? It's the right color. Uh-oh. Okay. Cancel. The, the chat window's in the way, and I can't get rid of it. Hide the chat. Hide the chat window. Can't do it. Okay, we'll move Saturn off to the side here. I assume that's Saturn. Let's focus here. Focus, focus. Looks like my collimation's off. Hey, Eric. I don't know what's going on here. That should look like a planet, but you can see that the, the um, focus is going past focus without hitting it. And I can also see that looks like it looks like the collimation's off, but I'm guessing that's something to do with um, how the iPhone is sitting there. Because that's, that's in focus there. You should see Saturn's rings if something weren't amiss with our situation here. And, uh, oh, I think I see what it is. The iPhone is cockeyed on this, uh, on the holder here. So, just moving like crazy. <laughs> oh, and I hit it with my hand. Yeah. Anyway, a marginally successful uh, <laughs> night here. iPhone astrophotography is always uh, sketchy. What I need to learn to do is, uh, you know, go from the computer over to um, put a camera in and have it stream to the computer and then do a, a screen share, and that would be a lot more efficient. Okay. All right. Let's go back to the moon. You can hear it slewing. There we go. And now I'm going to have to use the hand controller to uh, get it back there. Oh, look at this. There was our problem with Saturn. <laughs> we were probably only looking at the iPhone is completely off. We're off, off kilter here. Okay, so we needed to adjust the next YZ there. So you can go left and right and up and down. What's that, Isaac? Is there something you want to say to everybody? No? We only got one night. <laughs> we only got one like. Yeah, I'm not Mr. Beast. I'm watching a lot of Mr. Beast with the boys there. Um, but I also didn't tell anyone I was doing this, so that's usually the the ticket to getting more likes on your on your videos. You got to actually tell people that you're uh, you're filming them. Okay, there we go. Getting our focus. Setting the focus here. Yep, nice night to be looking at the moon. Definitely need to work on my setup. You can see the the limb of the moon there is all fuzzy, and that's got to do with this eyepiece, not the actual moon. Um, yeah. It's weird. Usually I, I'm using a telescope that's not mirror-reversed. I think that's Mare Crisium. There's two craters in the middle of that, Pierce and Picard, if that's what I think it is. But again, my brain's all backwards here. Yeah. But the top there, that's still the North Pole of the moon. And this where it's all busy, that's the South Pole. Again, there's your Lunar X there, right in the middle. Always cool to see. Come on, focus. Yeah. Okay. I 
wonder what special effects we can put on. What's the, what's this button do? We can add bubbles. Ooh, that's cool. That's cool. That's kind of goofy. There we go. I've doubled my uh, streaming ability. Dance party. Dance party button. That's kind of funky. Okay, now how do I shut this off? None. Okay. Very cool. Hey, we can reverse the camera. <laughs> it's very dark out. Okay. All right. Well, that's enough fun for one night. I'm going to shut this off. And say goodbye to everyone. Thanks for tuning in. This is uh, Learn to Stargaze here. And I'm uh, John Reed. I got my son Isaac here providing some color commentary. Um, oh, of course, as, as soon as I say, uh, it's time to go, a whole bunch of people. Well, I say a whole bunch, three or four, start uh, signing in. Now we've got six people watching. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hi. Five. Um, yeah, again, center of the screen there. There's your Lunar X. Fairly rare. You know, from one location, you probably get it four times a year, I would guess. Um, that assumes you lose two or three times for clouds, and half of them, the moon, uh, is on the other side of the world when the shadows are in the right place to make that X shape um, with the Werner crater there. So, yeah. Kind of cool. We got two likes now. <laughs> we got two likes going for the high score. Yeah. Well, we got five people watching and only two people like it. I guess we're not. Uh... We should have some jokes lined up. And that way, get get more likes. There's three likes. All right. So there's sympathy likes here. Four likes. Woo. Five likes. There we go. <laughs> and six people watching. Six likes. Six sympathy likes. Um, yeah, so who here, we got six people watching, who here in the chat uh, has not seen the Lunar X before? Let me show chat. Show chat. <laughs> okay, there's the chat. Yes, Lisa, you're a, you're a super fan. I know that. And Rob is here. Oh, so that's two for one on the viewers. We've got a hi from, is that Australia? Oh, my chat's gone again. Live chat. Bring it back. What's a Lunar X? Aha. Lunar X is just an illusion of light and shadows there in the center. It happens about uh, for about three hours a month. Um, the, the Werner crater and another couple of na neighboring craters form this X shape uh, in the shadows right there. Uh, let me center, see if I can center that a bit. Yeah. With the hand controller here. The hand controller on this Lestron is kind of, kind of funny because you, you have to end on, I think, a right press on the, on the keypad. And we now got seven likes. <laughs> we got seven likes. Seven likes. Five sympathy likes. And then Lisa, because she's a super fan. Look, our focus is off again. That's so weird. Okay. Let's see if we can get that back. Yeah. So when I first uh, streamed... Okay. Don't put your hand in the front of the telescope, kid. <laughs> Hard to police you, seven-year-old. Um, yeah, so when we first started streaming the Lunar X here maybe two hours ago before dinner. Um, it was only partially visible. It looked like a little space station or something. Like when you take a picture of the space station with a telescope and it doesn't look so great. Um, it looks sort of like that. But now it is the full X. And uh, so, so there it is. And yeah, again, it's visible about three to four hours a month, but again, you have to have no clouds and the moon has to be on your side of the earth to see it. Um, another from Australia. Yeah, so if you're in Australia right now, you probably can't see it. 
Maybe. I don't know. So in Australia, I assume it's still sunny out right now. Um, but you, the angles might be thus that the moon is rising. Um, it's first quarter, so the moon rises around noon. I'm not sure what time it is in Australia. I assume we're about nine hours ahead of them. Um, okay, so the moon will rise in Australia in about an hour or two, even though it'll still be daytime. Um, and by then, the shadow effect... Oh, right, yes. They're nine hours behind plus a day. So make some... Um, whatever that is. <laughs> 16 hours ahead. Something like that. Anyway. They're in the future. That's what's important. Okay. Yeah. So, so there it is. Lunar X. Very cool. Um, Owen Raining. So, Australia people, are you big fans of uh, Dylan O'Donnell and his hilarious YouTube channel? He's a lot more crass than me. And so it was funny because I wanted to advertise uh, my books on his channel. And he said no because my books were so wholesome. <laughs> and he swears a lot on his channel. I'm like, oh, okay. All right. Uh, but Dylan is super cool. And... Um, he mostly focuses on more advanced astrophotography and I dabble in astrophotography, but it's really not a niche that I can pursue because there's so many people who have decades of experience in it. And I, I like dabbling, uh, at least in my outreach stuff in visual astronomy and sort of let's see what telescopes you might have around the house and how do we have the most amount of fun with those telescopes. Um, of course, some people gave me a bit of crap about it uh, this weekend because I took a $100 telescope and put it on an imaging mount and took some pictures and I got called disingenuous by two people um, because they're like, you said you could take pictures with a $100 telescope. Of course, within the first 10 seconds, of the video, I have it on the $3,000 mount. And so to pacify them, I just took a picture of the, the fancy mount and put it on the YouTube thumbnail and said plus, and then the picture of the sort of the <laughs> $3,000 mount. And, um, and so I haven't got a nasty comment, uh, <laughs> since I fixed that, but it, it is pretty funny. You know, you, you have, if you have too much fun with astronomy, I think the traditionalists come in <laughs> and they're like, what are you trying to prove? And all I'm like is I'm just trying to have the most amount of fun as possible. And, you know, putting, and I did it with the, the $50 telescope too. I bought a Celestron travel scope for 50 bucks, a Canadian. So like $38 US. And I put that on, um, you know, I piggybacked that on sort of a $4,000 setup and took some photos. And the photos with it were good for someone that doesn't know what they're looking at. But I mean, t absolutely terrible from an astrophotography standpoint. And, um, and yeah, I, although I don't, I don't think I got too much hate mail for that. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so Frank uses the C8 uh, SET on an Ioptron. I don't think I've ever used Ioptron mounts. They look pretty cool, though. I like the, the ones that are square and, and compact. Although I think the AZ GTI um, is really taking a piece out of that that out of their market share there. Um, but I do understand they have they have some larger mounts as well. And. Uh, yeah, though I'm pretty happy with, so for visual astronomy, I'm using a Celestron AVX. And then for astrophotography, um, I use the EQ6R Pro when I'm at home. But crazily enough, the little um, AZ GTI, which apparently only has a seven pound, um, yeah, it's the 294MC Pro. That's, that's what I use too, Frank, love it. Um, yeah, so I get arc second guiding with the EQ6R Pro, 
but I get about 0.5 arc seconds when I guide with the little AZ GTI, which is only in beta for astrophotography as it is. And plus the mount is about two times over capacity when I use it. And usually when you're doing astrophotography, you're only supposed to be at half uh, capacity for, for your mount. And so, um, yeah. So I don't know what pixie dust is in the AZ GTI, but it, I mean, the, the accuracy, the guiding accuracy with that little mount is just insane. So, oh, and we are getting, we are about to get clouded out here. Look at that. Isaac, the moon is just in a small gap in the clouds now. Oh, there's the dumb, I'll send out on the dumbbell craters here. Oh, someone else. Oh, is that Frank that uses the AZ GTI? Um, with the 127 Mac, yes. Uh, that's a cool package. I really like that. So I have the 90 Mac or the C90 and I take that everywhere. So I could fit my C90, the AZ GTI and laptops in a single little backpack. And, and I just travel with that everywhere and then just carry the, the tripod by itself. Um, there's the clouds coming in. What else we got? Yeah, there's your lunar lunar V. I forget if lunar L is up here. I don't remember. Altai Scarp. It's too for you, but it's almost clear. <laughs> almost clear. It's cloudy again, again. It's kind of neat though, like to watch the clouds on the surface there. Oh look, there's the um, that's the Altai Scarp there in the center, which ends in Piccolomini, the crater at the end. L is down, says Lisa. Down as in south? Maybe. Gosh, it's been so long. All right. Although there's the, the lunar, or no, it's L for landing that I call the one in up uh, right there. Let me center it exactly in the screen there. This is how I find the Apollo 11 landing site. Oh, it's like I say, with the, the Celestron mount, if you don't end with a right, uh, hitting the right keypad. All right, let's slow down the slewing here. It, it uh, stops tracking. Okay, so we're almost exactly centered on the Apollo landing site right there. And those craters in the sea of, let me focus again here. Sea of Tranquility um, form, an, form an L. Of course, it's a backwards L here because we're... Uh, oh, we say it looks like Mickey Mouse. I missed, missed the first half of the comment there. Disappeared from my screen. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> so many craters on the moon look like, look like Mickey Mouse ears. But yeah, there's ones in the, at the bottom of my L for landing L. If I center the L here as the clouds whip by. There's the L centered in the screen. The clouds are almost gone, and then they're just gonna go again. Yeah, they're just gonna go again. I'm shocked though how much better the weather was, or is here in Canada, than it was when we were in Washington DC for the whole summer. Like that was just the worst weather for astronomy every night, just thunderstorms. And, um, and so, I only got about three days of astronomy the whole summer just because of the clouds. But we seem to, I don't know what the official statistics are here in Halifax, but I feel like it's got to be 50-50 for uh, weather. And... Um, and then even more so for the Brick Afton Observatory because it'll just wake up in the middle of the night by itself and start doing observations if there's a break in the clouds, which is convenient. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking that more kids would show up. So the telescope is, uh, I didn't extend the tripod legs at all. So like to do this live streaming, I'm bent way over. I should have brought a chair. 
but we are we are in a field in the middle of the city. We're lucky this city has fields in the middle of it. We're in Halifax, Nova Scotia, so I mean half of this city is is graveyards. It's pretty funny. Keep our graveyards downtown to remind us of our impending doom, as the comedians say about our city. Um, so we've got all the tight or a lot of the Titanic folks buried here in Halifax. So a lot of people come in for that. We've got a lot of um, military graves, especially. Um, I believe they've got a Battle of Britain. Um, it's almost place. 33 minutes. I know. So we'll, we'll definitely pack up here in a few minutes, but I think I must have started talking about more interesting things and because people, people started listening. What to use to take the video? This is an iPhone 11. Um, although this is a really, this is probably one of the most poor quality videos that I've taken. And I'm guessing it's just, it was really dark when I, when I'm, you know, setting up the iPhone adapter in almost the pitch black. And I don't think it's very straight on. And so you can see the left side of the screen is really blurry. Um, so that's sort of working against me. I really should have done, you know, not an iPhone. Just I'm using an XYZ adapter to connect to uh, the eyepiece. And then the eyepiece I'm using is one of those Celestron zoom eyepieces, and they've got a lot of aberration in them. So they're really only good near the center of the field of view. And then as you go out to the side, not so hot. Um, it would be better just to use like a basic plossel or something. And because you need to use only the one and a quarter inch eyepieces to um, attach the iPhone adapters to, you can't use the big two inch ones. So you're not going to be using big, um, you know, Teleview eyepieces like that we'd have at, at the observatory. Kind of creepy there with the clouds. Where'd you buy the adapter? I bought it at a Canadian Tire for, I think I bought this one at Canadian Tire, like 39 bucks or something. Usually now they're about 70 bucks on Amazon. Uh, have you used the 130 star sense? I've used the 114 star sense. Uh, the 130 is, I don't think you can go wrong with that scope. Um, at least not if you can get it for around 400 bucks, which is what it used to be priced at. I don't know if it's gone up. But Star Sense is a lot of fun. Um, it's fun because it's so ridiculously easy and it's so reliable. The issue I had was the telescope. The 114 is a really, really inexpensive piece of optics and the views, what you should be able to see with a telescope that size, you simply can't see just because the quality, uh, you lose it on the quality. Um, yeah, so I I like Star Sense. I don't think for the price of the 130 that that's the scope I would get. Um, but that said, Star Sense is just it's fun. You put your iPhone on there. It uses the little mirror to plate solve the sky, which means it knows where the telescope is pointed. And then even if you pick your telescope up and walk it across the yard. It just looks at the sky and knows where it is, and it knows what orientation it's in, and it knows what it's pointed at. So, um, I've got a video planned where I'm going to pull the Star Sense off the 114 because I only paid 100 bucks for it for the whole telescope, including Star Sense, um, and I got it used in B&H Photo, and uh, I'm going to pull it off that telescope and put it on a Dobsonian. And then hypothetically, you go out to a dark sky and just see how fast I can knock out the Messier list or whatever's in the sky when I, when I do this. Um, I'm hoping to increase the quality of the videos. I haven't really told anyone this, at least not on YouTube. Uh, increase the quality of my YouTube videos substantially. So um, I hired someone starting next week to help me uh, increase the quality of the videos. So, um, hopefully, and she's a cinematographer from the Canadian show Trailer Park Boys. And if you haven't seen Trailer Park Boys and you Google it now that I've said it, I'm so sorry. Um, your ears and eyes will burn or you'll love it. It's actually very popular, but it's very crass. Um, 
anyway, so she was a, a cinematographer from that show and she's off for the winter. And so I'm going to have her help me make astronomy videos. And uh, so hopefully we can make the Learn to Stargaze videos even more fun because that's my goal. I figure if you have fun, uh, you'll learn stuff um, that way as opposed to having them primarily educational and then hoping that stuff sticks. Like, let's just, let's just have as much fun as possible. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, Lunar X. There we go. We got 10 likes there, Isaac. Look at that. Yeah. Going for the high score here. Uh, 10 viewers, 10 likes. Good, good odds. Feel free to drop in a sympathy like if you're watching and haven't liked this video yet. We'll take it. Um, yeah. It's about three degrees Celsius out here. Get pretty cold. Winter is c definitely coming to Canada. The Open. 11th person, why don't you leave a like? <laughs> My son says, hey, 11th person that just started watching our Lunar X feed. How about you drop a like? Because my son says so. The challenge we have is we, we watch a lot of uh, YouTube on our TV and we don't really have the ability, I don't know, with whatever, you know, device we're using. Um, whatever device we're using, it's hard to like stuff and like and subscribe. Haven't quite figured that out yet. So, yeah. Well, there's your Lunar X. Haven't got a warning from the cell phone company yet that we've run out of data. Cell phone companies in Canada are really, really skimpy on the data. Like, really skimpy. They're like, 80 bucks a month, have two gigs. <laughs> Thanks, Canada. Unlike T-Mobile there in the States, 40 bucks, unlimited everything. I actually had T-Mobile when we moved to Canada and I just kept my American phone and paid the 40 bucks a month. And then I got a nasty letter from T-Mobile that I was violating the spirit of their agreement. And I think that's how they phrased it too. Like, they're like, you're, you're using way too much international data, violating the spirit of the program. And, and then, so I'm like, all right. And that motivated me to cancel my T-Mobile plan and get a Canadian cell phone. Yeah. Uh, it looks like these clouds are really booking it. Yeah. Thanks, Henrik. There's a big cloud gun and then we're not going to be able to see it at all. There's a big cloud, yes. Big cloud. This seems like a good place to end, maybe. <laughs> it does, and we should probably go home. You're probably getting cold. Yeah, I have cold oh. feet. Oh. Okay, you have cold feet? Okay. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for tuning in to Learn to Stargaze. Don't forget to subscribe. And remember, if I hit 10,000 subscribers... I am going to try to open a merch store and sell some cool uh, Learn to Stargaze merch, uh, especially with those I, the, the Moon Phases paintings that I did. Um, that, so I've got the one t-shirt with the Moon Phase paintings, and I think um, Lisa's got them on her, on her wall. Yes, you're welcome, Rob and Lisa. And uh, so anyway, I think those are the only the only two pieces of Learn to Stargaze merch pretty much in existence. Um, so, yeah, no, no to the LT. <laughs> um, yes. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's my goal for next year is to hit 10,000 subscribers. Uh, and that way you can, you're allowed to advertise merch on YouTube after you hit that. And so got some cool moon shirts that I've designed that don't exist yet. Not enough people wearing moon shirts out there. Anyway, we'll see if we can fix that. Anyway, thank you all for tuning in. Moon is gone, so we're going to sign off. Have a great evening, and remember to keep looking up.